Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about how to do the blending drill. Now, many teachers in my videos have asked about that blending board right there. They've asked where I've gotten it, how I use it, so I thought I would take some time in this video to kind of go over where I got that board and some other blending board options for you. I'll go over why we should do a blending drill and then also how to do the blending drill with a few different options for you. So whether you already do a blending drill in your own classroom and you just wanna see how I would do it, or if you don't do a blending drill but you're interested in starting one, this is the video for you. If you're ready, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. So first let's talk about that board right there. That is the board that people often see in the back of my videos and I've gotten numerous questions and emails asking where I got it. That board specifically is from IMSI, um, the Institute of Multisensory Education, and I took the Orton Gillingham, the Comprehensive Plus course, uh, last year, and I absolutely loved it. And included in the tuition, it's a pretty expensive training, but included in the training, uh, you get all the materials. So I got, you know, three different manuals for kindergarten, first, and second grade. I got a syllable division book. I got the blending board with all the cards. There's a ton included. So I'll go ahead and link some information about that training down in the description in case you want to check it out. It's a 30 hour training here in Massachusetts. It does qualify for PDPs, so extra professional development points that I can get uh, towards, you know, furthering my license and moving up on a step schedule and things like that. So it was definitely worth it, but it is pricey. Um, you can get their blending board and their blending cards on their site as well, and I'll link those down below. Uh, but forewarning, they are pretty expensive. So there are plenty of other options that are a little bit cheaper uh, if you're looking to make your own blending board. Just so you can see, these are what the cards for that look like. They are quite large. They're bigger than my head. Um, they're meant for whole group learning instead of, as opposed to small group learning, you could use this in a small group as well, but that's why they're so large. You could actually probably display these cards on your whiteboard ledge and do it with your whole class. So that is one option. Let me show you some others. You could of course just print some letters on some cardstock. Now, when doing that, similar to how they have theirs, I do like to have a different color for the vowels. So you could either change the color of the vowel in the middle, um, or you could change the color of the paper that you printed on just to help differentiate. If you're doing this in small group, you can just use index cards, make some piles, and then I'll show you how to do this in a bit, but you can start your blending drill and randomize it with your students. Now, another fun option that I've seen many times is to use a binder and then just print out some letter cards. So I actually have these letter cards. They're in the SG. JT Literacy Club. Um, I'll also link them down below so you can check them out. But they are, now they're not just letter cards, I should say. They are phoneme grapheme cards. So we have, you know, all the vowel teams. We have all the diagraphs. We have blends, our controlled vowels. We have a card for each of the things you're going to teach your students in kindergarten all the way through second grade. And basically based on where they should go, and we'll talk about that in a minute, you can do a little hole punch, put it in your binder, and then you can start having students blend. Ab, tab, and then you flip one randomly, k, ab, cab, and you can basically make your own little interactive board. So while I do love my board and I do use it, I just wanted to show some other options that are a bit more cost effective. Another fun thing is you can use these little card holders like this. They're meant to help students, um, you know, if you're having a deck of cards, you're playing a card game, it's tricky for young students to hold all those cards, but something like that is also a great option to put index cards in and then you can use that as a blending board as well by pulling up cards. All right, so there's plenty of options for you so you know you don't need that exact board to get started doing a blending drill. A blending drill is a great thing to do in your class. So now let's go over what it is and how it works. All right, so a blending drill is essentially a drill where students are going to blend sounds together to make words. And the way we set it up, it's a great activity for students to do because they need to attend to each sound in the word before they blend it together. Because it's going to be random, it's going to be quick, and they won't be able to memorize the words that they're reading, so they really have to say each sound and then blend it together. Now the blending drill and the way I learned it through the Imsy Orton Gillingham training is part of the three-part drill that they use as a phonics warm-up. Now I talked a little bit about this in this video right here. I kind of walked through the three steps as a great phonics warm-up. And it's recommended that the three-part drill happens at least three times in your classroom. Now, the blending drill, which is what we're gonna talk about today, is part three of that three-part drill. So just really quickly to go over it, the first part is a visual drill. 
And basically you can use these same cards right here. And with the cards, you simply hold it up. Again, visual drill, so students are seeing it. You don't say anything, you just hold it up and students say T says T. And then you hold up another card. M says M. Mm. S says S. That's what students are saying, you are just holding it up. So part one is visual. Part two is the auditory drill. And with the auditory drill, you are going to say something to students without providing a visual. And this is where students are going to use some sort of tactile movement. Maybe they're using sand or sandpaper. They might use a bumpy board, um, something to form the letters because you are going to say, the sound is mmm. So no visual, it's just auditory. The sound is mmm. Students will then in the sand or on their sandpaper say M says mmm. And they will go ahead and draw the graphemes that make the phoneme you said. That's part two and part three is the blending drill. So let's dive into how this works. All right, I moved us into our kitchen so we could see how this works quickly. Um, I'm here, I'm gonna use the binder version of it just because I have it already set up and it's simple enough. So for the blending drill with your students, again, your job is to point to each sound. They say it and then you kind of run your finger along the bottom so that way they blend the sounds together. Now, a couple important notes to make is that you are not adding any sounds or letters here that your students have not learned. So if you are a kindergarten teacher, you're going to want to wait until you have at least 10 letters. You're going to need some vowel sounds here. Uh, and we'll talk about placement and where these cards should go in a minute. But right now, basically, this is how it's set up. All your vowels will be in the center. You'll have some consonants in the initial position and some consonants at the end positions. Actually, since we're talking about that now, here I'm going to put up a little picture of what the recommended letters are for the initial positions as well as the final position. So feel free to pause this little shot right here. You can see some of the letters at the beginning are L, H, C, J. We have Q, U, we have the digraph C, H. And you can see some of the final letters are M, G, D, T, P. We have X, we have the digraphs SH and TH. Feel free to rewind and pause that. And as I'm sure you noticed, some of those letters could go in the initial position, even if they mentioned final, uh, and some could go in the final, even if they said initial. But those recommendations were made because you can really make the most words uh, for students. And they also kind of step away from some of the trickier words that you might not want your students to say aloud, um, whether they are real or nonsense. So we'll go ahead and assume that our students have learned all of these letters right here that are included in our board. I don't know exactly how many cards I printed out for this example that I'm doing for you right now, but in my letter card unit, I go in the order of UFLI, their scope and sequence in terms of which letters and sounds they teach. So each page isn't going to be in ABC order, they're going to be in that order. Um, but you can print them out, of course, you could print them all out and then sort them as you needed to, to follow your own scope and sequence. But so here we have all the letters and just a side note, I would print them out on cardstock. Uh, these ones are in paper because I just printed them out last minute. Um, but I would definitely print them on cardstock so they last a little bit longer. And again, my job is to point and blend. So I would tell my students, ready? And then I'm going to be the student here. T -a -b tab. B cab K A B cab K A B cob K A G cog K A G keg K A B keb F A B feb and so on. So a couple things I want you to notice is number one, I don't have a rhyme or reason in terms of which one I am flipping. Another reason I like sitting on this side is I am able to see a little bit which card might be coming next. And you do want to, you know, be aware because sometimes since we do expect nonsense words and we want nonsense words in here, um, again, sometimes, you know, an inappropriate word, since you're randomizing this, can happen. So you want to constantly, you know, just be aware of what it's going to be. And if you flip it real quick and see, just, you know, flip to that time. You know, first graders love to always just keep you on your toes. So that is how the blending drill works. And you'll want to try to do about 30 flips. Uh, again, depending on how many letters you have here, how many different combinations you can make. So as you saw, there were a lot of nonsense words in there, which is great. I have a whole video about why nonsense words are great. 
but what they do is they really help students attend to each sound because it's not a word they've seen before, it's nothing they could have memorized before, so they really need to draw on that phonics and that sound letter knowledge to go ahead and blend the sounds and make a word. So another step is for your students, whenever they see a real word, they can give you a thumbs up as they blend. So t ab tab quick check-in, yes, that's real. Now this is largely a student-run activity, and it should be. Uh, you are just the facilitator pointing to the letters, having them say the sounds, and then doing that little swipe action. But if you hear your students mess up on a word, since you're doing this whole group or in small group, and if they seem to have trouble, let's say they say t ad tad half the class says that, right? That's an easy mix up for your kindergarten, first grade students to make. So you might want to have them follow the I do, we do, you do and say, mm, let's look at this again. Listen to me. T -a -b -tab. Let's do it together with the class. T -a -b -tab. And then you have them do it. So a very basic, listen to me first, let's do it together, and then you try it on your own. And lastly, one other thing that can help is I have seen teachers use the blending board and their blending cards will actually have some visual images on there. So in my pack here, I printed out just the regular cards. You can see my vowels I printed in red. Um, again, you could just print this on a different color paper if you wanted to, but I like to have the uh, vowels stand out. But another option is you can put that visual on your letter cards. So here you can see just under the letter, there's a small visual image for your students to look at just if they need help recalling the sound that that graphy makes. So in my blending card unit that's set up like this, I have the regular cards and I also have those ones with the visuals. I do also have a little reference sheet in terms of which position you can put your letters and letter sounds to make the most amount of words. So the three part drill is an effective research based type of phonics warm up that is going to be great for your students where they have the visual, the auditory and this blending part. But if you aren't able to do all of that, it is still great to have your students blend those sounds. Blending practice is going to be highly beneficial for your students even if you don't do the other two parts. Now I've shared these in the past before too but I also have my digital blending slides. They look like this right here and I actually have these split up into different skills. So we have CVC words, we have silent E, we have consonant blends and so on. And within each skill I actually have two versions of these cards. Now I have the original blending slides which are going to be like the blending board where you can see all three letters at one time but then I also have like I'm showing right now the successive blending slides where students can only attend to one sound at a time and blend those together before adding on the next sound. Those digital blending slides go right onto Google Slides. You press slideshow and all you have to do as the teacher is with your smart board or at your computer, just press next, 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 next. And then that little object slides under, it kind of acts like your finger in the blending board to remind students to put all those sounds together. That just gives you another option and those are nice and big so they're great to do as a whole group. I almost ended this video, but I did want to pop back on because I forgot to make something clear. In my examples, I'm only using CVC words here. Um, and of course you can do, you can make a ton of different words here. You want to keep it randomized um, and flip over different ones each time. But you can also do this with all the skills your students are going to be learning. Uh, we can do this with vowel teams, we can do this with our controlled vowels, we can do this with consonant LE. Um, so your students all the way through second grade and even some of your students in third grade can still benefit from blending longer words. As we do get to blending those longer sounds with some trickier patterns in there, we will have, like I said, we might have vowel teams here in the middle, or we might have our controlled vowels here in the middle, mixed in with some of these other short vowels. And then depending on the word, this short vowel sound right now might make a long vowel if it's an open syllable, two syllable word, like table. This could easily be B-L-E when we get into the consonant L-E and we've added those cards here. For some of our longer blends, we might have S-C-R, skr, on one card. Now it is important for students to understand, and they will by this point, that um, those three letters each have their own sound, but they are going to be together for a blend, and then we might have skr, ab, scrab, which of course is a nonsense word, but is part of the word scrabble. So I did just want to take a minute to point out to you that this is something that can definitely be added onto with each of the skills that your students learn through the primary grades, and it's still going to be just as beneficial for them. All right, so I would love to know from you if you already do a blending drill in your class. If not, do you think you can try it out now? Do you think it's pretty simple? If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. 
As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.